What's going on? Travis here, travisstetzel.com, trainaggressive.com, and just here in my gym answering a question. I get this question a lot, and it's actually kind of a pet peeve of mine. Um, I get this question uh, from my athletes as well, and it's the question of, Travis, how much weight should I be using? And uh, like I said, I get this question quite a bit. I've gotten it from dozens of people, and uh, here's my answer, all right? When it comes to like dumbbell movements, kettlebell movements, sandbag movements across the board, there's really no standardized weight that should be uh, programmed, all right? Or that's, that's kind of the standard, you know? Should you be using 35 pound dumbbells for this? Or sh should you start out with this or that? Basically what you gotta do first and foremost is find out where you're at. When I get these questions um, from people, I could answer it if I watched you train in person. However, I have no idea how strong you are. I don't know what your experience level is. Um, I don't know how long you've been training. Um, don't know how well your form and technique is. So a lot of things play into you know, how you pick your loads for your different weights. All right. So uh, when it comes to things like kettlebells, stuff like that, there are um, some certain uh, weights that you can choose to start with. Uh, for me, when I first started with kettlebells, I remember I got a 30-pound kettlebell uh, for Christmas a long time ago. And I remember when I first got that, it was pretty light. Um, you know, but I, I thought it was, uh, it was pretty awkward. And uh, you know, I just wasn't used to training with this, so I thought it was heavy at the time. But now, 30-pound kettlebell, I don't even use a 30-pound kettlebell, you know. Um, once you get the movements down, like cleans and swings and push presses and all that good stuff with kettlebells, you know, you're going to start working with heavier uh, weights. So my standard for kettlebells would be to have either a 40 or a 50-pound kettlebell, depending on how strong you are, all right? Because once you learn those movements, once you pick up how to do a swing and a clean and a snatch and all that stuff, you know, a 30-pound kettlebell is probably going to be too light for you. So just some uh, standards for kettlebells. When it comes to sandbags, all right, I get the question about how heavy should I be using for a sandbag uh, when people are using uh, my bags, bells, and bodyweight program. Um, for sandbags, my first recommendation would be this. Get a big bag to start with because with a big bag, you can always take weight away from it but then you can always add more weight to it so it has a higher maximum of the amount of weight that you can load into it. Whereas if you get a smaller bag, you get a smaller bag, you can only load it up to the maximum amount of weight that it can hold. So I remember when we first uh, started our gym, we made a big order with sandbags. We got a bunch of these like little 50 pound sandbags and people got up to that level real quick. We couldn't even use those 50 pound sandbags anymore. They were too light. Uh, my recommendation for starting weight for sandbags would be at least 60 pounds and above, all right? Because just like with kettlebells, once you figure out those movements and you're using your hips like power cleans, push presses, different sandbag movements like that, you're going to want to have a little bit heavier. Um, anything uh, lower than that is going to be pretty light unless you're a complete beginner. And uh, going back on those sandbags, get something bigger so you can throw more weight into it. This is a big brute force bag right there. Uh, it's a prototype they sent me a long time ago. I love this bag. It's indestructible. But uh, you can load that up with 200 pounds, all right? Right now it's only loaded up with 100 pounds. So it's pretty uh, versatile. One other thing with sandbags that I'll recommend that'll help you out. Um, I've, gotten, I've gotten this question a lot. When you, If you're making your own sandbags or you have a sandbag and you need to add fillers to it, I would create fillers that are about 20 to 25 pounds. So that way, when you're adding weight or taking weight away, you're not making huge jumps. Because um, if you have fillers that are 100 pounds each, you know, you gotta add 100 pounds. Whereas if you have fillers that are 25 pounds, you can easily make smaller increments in weight and that'll help you out, progress over time. Now with dumbbells, it really comes down to you, all right? With any weight that you're using, okay? Any weight that you're using, there's no standard. Like, should I be using 35 pounds for this? I have no freaking idea, all right? How's your form? How's your technique? The thing is, you got to be 
using a weight that's going to push you, okay, for whatever rep scheme that you're using. So if you're doing five sets of five, you know, those first three reps should be pretty solid. Last two reps should be pretty difficult, pushing you to the brink of technical failure, all right? If everything's going smooth and easy, every set really isn't pushing you, you need to up the weight, okay? Favorite uh, quote of mine from Zach Evanesh, my buddy. Uh, rule of thumb, if it's easy, go heavier. It doesn't get any more simple, basic than that, all right? So choose a weight that's going to push you, that's going to still allow you to use good form and technique, but, uh, you know, choose a weight that's going to push the brink of technical failure, all right? That's the best um, um, advice I can use for that, all right? So hope that helps you out um, with uh, your uh, weight selection, load selection, different things like that. Um, if you have any other comments, thoughts, post them up below. Bottom line, keep training ham, 110%. Living aggressive, getting strong. Travis, I'm out.